Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe presented by Coop Ale Works. We are back in our studio and you might notice if you're watching on YouTube that we have a couple of special guests with us today. <laughs> but I feel like as co-host of this podcast, it's our, it's our job to set the scene for you. And before I introduce our special guest, I just want to take you back. It's a Wednesday night in Paycom Center. The Thunder are taking on the Houston Rockets. It's a rematch. The team just played them 48 hours earlier. The Thunder has a comfortable lead going into halftime. It's very fun atmosphere inside of Paycom Center. The third quarter rolls around, and a very tall gentleman in a very furry red coat walks in yeah. and sits down courtside. This was not Santa. Not Santa. <laughs> it's about that time of year, but it was not Santa. His name was Drake, and he was sitting next to the two folks sitting next to me right now. And this is Jim and Renee Stanley, Drake's new parents. <laughs> yeah. Jim and Renee, thank you I guys so much for joining us on the podcast you today. Welcome. You all have just gone viral. Tell us about your experience being courtside on Wednesday night. Well, I it was just sometime after halftime, right, mm -hmm. when he came. Okay, so... I was drinking and looking this way, and all of a sudden, I see Drake sitting next to my husband, and here's how I knew his name. Okay. I knew he had dated Serena Williams years ago, and I'd seen that picture, and so I just retained that, and I leaned over to my husband and said, I think that guy's name is Drake. Now, and uh, just to, <laughs> when he sat down, yeah. I said, I really like what you have on. And he just, he turned around to me and he goes, hey, thanks, and shook my hand, and that's from there on. And then Renee leaned in I said, in I really said, like your earrings. That's Drake. You know, I thought, hmm, yeah, I've I heard said, that name. I said, I really like your earrings. And then he said, oh, these? Oh, they're fake. <laughs> and I believed him. I thought, well, that makes sense. I said, well, yeah, that makes sense, because you probably wouldn't want anybody ripping them out of your earlobes. And he started laughing. And uh, the guy behind me said, do you know who that is? I said, yeah, his name's Drake. And he said, uh, and I said, I just complimented him on his earrings. And he told me they were fake. And he goes, they're not fake, they're real. <laughs> and I said, well, he said they were fake. But at this point, I mean, I we really didn't know the magnitude or who. I knew, I thought maybe You didn't he was, realize he was. No, you know, I thought maybe he yeah. sang. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that was it. And I knew he had dated Serena. And I love Serena. So... <laughs> That was it. So at what point did it shift and you guys realized? Well, that when it, it was all of a sudden here comes the mascot well, Rumble. with Rumble. a big camera right behind him. Yeah. And I thought, um, and he looked at me, he, he turned to me and he said, this is for you. And I said, no, no, that's you. <laughs> you know, and that's when we were, you saw me laugh. Yeah, he looked like he was trying to hide behind you yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I mean, he was so funny about it. I mean, we were just having a great time. Well, so then we just started, yeah. as the game went on, when we had sold pieces, we'd just start talking. And Well, I asked him why he was there. Uh, I said, are you here for the Houston Rockets? Because I thought, why are you here? And uh, he said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, my friend, Shay, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm from Toronto. And that's what it lit up for me. Right. I said, Toronto? Oh, you're Canadian. I said, well, my grandfather is from Quebec. And he said, oh, really? And I said, yes, my maiden name is Charbonneau, which, you know, I thought that gave sure. me credentials. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I laughed and I said, so what's your maiden name? <laughs> and he laughed over that. So then we started talking about Oklahoma sports. And here's where I think he thought these people are clueless because we were talking about OU basketball. And then I said, have you heard what happened to our football team? Oh. And I said that Lincoln Riley, that some bitch, got on a plane and took everybody with him to go to USC. And I said, and we're pissed, that some bitch. And that's when he started laughing. And then he said, do you mind if I take a selfie with you all? And that's why I thought, well, sure, go ahead. But I thought, why do you want a selfie with us? And so he took it, and I said, and I was laughing. I said, just tell everybody we're your new parents, because who would know who we are? And, <laughs> and then it, it went viral. My it, my phone kept dinging, and my watch kept going off, and I'm looking at it, and people go, that's Drake. That's Drake. Do you know who that is? And like, 
I kept, yeah, I guess that's Drake. <laughs> but I really, we really didn't know. We were honest in it. He just, he was charming. He was nice. He was funny. He was sweet. I did ask him, do you know how to ice skate? And he looked at me funny. I said, well, you're Canadian. And he said, well, yeah, yeah, I do know how to ice skate. I mean, that's what we were interested in. And right. then he and Jim started talking about hockey. Connor, yeah, hockey. And yeah, he and knows so Connor nice. McDavid personally, okay. who is one of my favorite hockey players. Yeah. Because I follow the Oilers. They used to be, uh -huh. you know, the right. Bears feed team. So we kind of got talking in hockey. He was telling me all about Connor McDavid. And I mean, it was like just everyday guy sitting next to me we talking. We just thought, this you is know? the nicest guy. And yeah, he dresses real swanky, kind of, mm -hmm. you uh -huh. know, but he is so nice. And he's really good looking. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Renee asked the guy behind, are you, are you his security? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's And I figured, security. you know, some celebrities, that guy would have probably reached over and said, don't talk to him. Right, uh -huh. right. We um, never even, I knew he was there. But they were they couldn't have been nice. Down to earth. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And and at the end of the game, I mean, we were chatting and I mean just chatting. Uh -huh. You know, just being friendly to him. And at the end of the game he stood up kind of bowed to me and I said, Drake, you are just lovely. And he is. And he kissed my hand and he left. And that's when people run out and said, What did you say to him? <laughs> what was he saying? It to had him? to have been something. Do you know who that is? I had to ask a man, I said, Tell me what he does do. And he said, Honey, he's a rapper. He's like the hottest rapper, and I went, oh, okay. They were playing his music in the oh, arena. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 no clue, no <laughs> clue. I mean, you know, we think we're hip, but we're like, uh, what generation are we? Older one. Yeah, <laughs> the baby boomer generation. Yeah. That's our hip. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes to show, like, you never know what's going to happen in no. a night at Paycom Center. And, you know, just so special. I don't so think special. you could have sat yeah. next to better representation oh. of, like, the Oklahoma spirit. You know? the That's what's been nice. Yeah. We were worried because, you know, I looked at comments. I thought, oh, my God, they're going to say what idiots we are. And everybody was really nice. Now, somebody did make fun of my shoes. And I want you to know they're not Skechers. They were Uggs. <laughs> and somebody made fun of my hair, which they were right. It was like, <laughs> um, but we were having a good time at the game. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're having a good time. Yeah. By the time third quarter rolls around, yeah. you, know, right. you never know what Paris and I are going to look like by that point either. <laughs> we were having a blast. Yeah, and all of a sudden I look up and I realize, oh, they're losing. Um, but it was a great interaction. I'm glad that we weren't intimidated by him because, we, well, hell, we didn't know who he was. Right, mm -hmm. right. And yeah. uh, and he's, I, I just want to reiterate what a nice, charming, friendly, approachable man he is. Yeah. And he actually, he so actually, good looking. he asked for my phone so he could take a, a selfie with yeah. my phone. That's great. Yeah. That's really And I so, said, yeah, here, and he fixed it up and took a selfie. So I nice have it on my phone. But that night, I was so jazzed up because people kept dinging me and dinging me and dinging me and i heard from people on from alaska new york city you know friends there and like i just saw you on tv with drake and it's still i don't think settled we were still like i guess he's a big deal well it's, the oklahoman had that radical right. today mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah joe masato in the oklahoman if you if you didn't yeah, see that he yet. approached yeah. me everybody as we were so leaving nice. and asked me if he could call me the next day which he did yeah and that's where that article. we said Okay. And um, I think it was my grandson, though, who's a senior at OU, I want mm -hmm. to tell you. And he was the one in all caps, Grandma, you are next to Drake. And I thought, this must be something big. I had to have earned you some points with uh, I, <laughs> the grandkids. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all think. God, she's so cool. So now you got the the photo on your phone. Like, is this going to be on the Christmas card this year? Like, well, how are you how are oh, you going to incorporate this moving forward? Yeah, yeah. Are, no. are Happy you, holidays are, from you and yeah. Drake. Yeah. Yeah. from our son? new adopted son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Andy Warhol said everybody's famous for fifteen minutes. Well, we got our fifteen That's minutes. That's true. And, and I mean, true. it was it was fun. It's been a pleasant surprise. We've loved it, but we're tired now. We want to go back to you know. Renee and Jim Stanley, um, but he's a lovely man, and I still haven't heard anything that he's recorded. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you over a playlist. <laughs> yeah. We'll send you over a playlist. Got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry. I, What's interesting is that he actually did put that out. That yeah. Yeah. New parents. 
Mm-hmm. I saw, he, you know, he, he was on the phone quite a bit. Yeah. And I didn't want to just sit there and stare at his phone. I had no idea he was doing that. That's cool. You know, it's just, <laughs> oh, yeah, why don't I do that? Yeah, we and thought we were being funny. That, yeah, right. when that happened, then it just went crazy. Because I guess people are like, what? <laughs> well, it was good publicity for him. And I'm glad that we represented Oklahoma in a decent manner. Of course. Um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, everyone's been very kind, and uh, we appreciate that. And in our opinion, we are not old, yeah. but uh, we think we're still happening. Age-wise. But evidently, yeah. yeah, we've still got a lot to learn. So, so. you said that you, you're looking forward to, to going back to being Jim and Renee. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, can you give us a little bit of your backstory? How long have you been in Oklahoma City? How long have you all um, gone to Thunder Games? How how often is it that you sit courtside at, at Thunder Games? Ooh. Uh, okay, we you have tell. had season tickets yeah. to the Blazers, the Barons, and now the Thunder. The Thunder, but I only keep the tickets for I'm up on uh, second uh, second section. I only keep them for the concerts. Okay. I have friends that use my tickets. We have premium so seats. I, I hate to say it. I don't come to very many games, but um, our our little uh, Taylor called me Monday. He said, "Hey, I got a couple of floor seats. You want them? Sure. Yeah." So he went thought, "Oh, this will be fun." That's amazing. But we love, you know, hockey. That was our passion mm-hmm. with the Barons who were here. Mm-hmm. I mean, actually, I won the Cadillac on the last giveaway. <laughs> Go figure. I get lucky. Like yeah. lucky yeah. Now, I get right to, now I get to sit next to Blake. You know, and then, Great. I mean, it, <laughs> excuse me. In, in that same month, I won a car, and then I won a year's worth of dues at our club. Oh, my gosh. In a, in a, just a giveaway. It's like trying to get the lottery. Never won that one. I'm going to take you to Vegas, I think. Yeah. I think, I think oh, that's I the did. Yeah. I, that good call. came up. I did tell uh, Drake that I said, I'm taking my grandson to a Las Vegas Golden Knights game. And he said, oh, who are they playing? I said, the Avalanche. And he said, oh, well, I'm a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. So that's what, how we kind of got talking gotcha. about hockey. Yeah, that's, but yeah, you that's asked about us. Yeah. I grew up in upstate New York, near the okay. Canadian border. Okay. So Canadian roots. Jim is from Berkeley, California. And I we feel if you're many, many years now. And I have to say, I love Oklahoma. I love the people. I'm going to get emotional. This is the nicest people in the world. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean to do that. They are they're going. just so, <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma is the best place ever. Neither of us are from here originally either, yeah. but it's home now. Every time know? somebody yeah. asks me yeah. about Oklahoma, yeah. the first thing I mention is the people. Yeah. 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 Well, one of the kind. It's just like sitting next to Drake. I mean, I started a conversation. I mean, yeah. it's just what we do, right? Yeah. People are friendly yeah. here. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think, I, hopefully he appreciated that, I guess. And that's part of the experience of coming to Paycom Center is, you know, the, the, yeah. the sports venues that I've been to over the course of my career and lifetime, the best ones are the ones where you show up and it feels like everybody knows everybody. Yes. Even if it's your first time there, yes. you're part of the family. And I feel yeah. like that's what we have here at our building. Oh, okay. yeah. Everybody around us, there was a guy sitting behind us who had this beautiful tattoo. And I said, God, I love your tattoo. And so we talked. And the guy next to you was going to wanted you to share his popcorn. Yeah, he wanted to share my popcorn. <laughs> his popcorn. I mean, people, everyone around was friendly. So that's why when he sat there, we're, hi. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yeah, I like your outfit. Cool. Oh, I like those yeah. earrings. Yeah. So that's just how we are. And, right. uh, just like true old moments. It, yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, when, that's that's our fifteen minute story. So when Drake plans his next tour throughout the country, maybe you all can convince him to, to come swing by OKC and wouldn't that be something? And, and bring you on stage. I was I was just gonna ask him where his tour was gonna go and then it the game ended and he stood up and yeah. it kind of finished because I yeah. was curious if he would is this a big enough venue for him? I mean he place and looking at what he's done i mean he plays in big venues it'd be fun it would be it fun. would be a lot of fun yeah absolutely yeah i know you guys would probably be in attendance for that one sure so why was he really here 
Do we know? We don't, I don't think. I don't I'm think hearing really rumors. Knows. Knows. I mean, I, I I'm do hearing think, rumors. I do think that you know, obviously, the Thunder has two really exciting Canadian players on the team. Yeah. Young, mm-hmm. young rising stars in Shea and Lou, and um, you know, if he happened to be in the state for some other things, like why not? I mean. Of all the things that you can do in Oklahoma City, I can't think of much better than coming down to, right. to the arena. Right, he did say I was here, and, to, um, yeah. here uh, visiting the And flat. he was definitely cheering yeah. him on. Yeah, yep. for sure. Yeah, I, could see after him, the game. I could see him kind of giving those like little side comments every time Shea or yeah. Lou would make a shot. And then, of course, we saw the, the big hugs at the yeah. end of the night. For that was the guys. other yeah. thing. So, like, uh, one of the referees came over, shook his hand, and then rumble and, and stuff. And I thought... Wow, he is popular. Yeah, <laughs> and right. it still wasn't registering uh, how popular he and he, was. He's just a big time booster of the NBA. Like oh, he is, he is, basketball. he loves basketball. Oh, he he's courtside okay. everywhere mm-hmm. and well, very popular with the players. I asked him if he could yeah, ice skate, and he told me he could. <laughs> so there you go. That's we'll have to see that. <laughs> another another athletic gift. As well, well, yeah, well. I connected yeah. the Canadian. I said, "You can ice skate, right?" And he said, and he looked at me real funny. I said, "You know, skate." And he said, "Oh, yeah, I can." And I said, well, of course, you're Canadian. Oh, that makes sense. How did you know? How did you know, Renee? Yeah. <laughs> My mom knows everything. Exactly. Yeah, and grow up ice skating. So. That's awesome. Well, Jim and Renee, it has been an Thanks. absolute pleasure to have you Thank on the you. podcast today. Thank, Thank you so you. much for fun. taking the time. Thanks. It was fun, and everyone's been so nice. Well, so thank yeah. you. We, we, we appreciate it. We have a saying on the podcast that you're a guest the first time, but after, you know, you're you're a friend of the pod. I think you guys are, are the new parents of the pod. Yes. Oh, yes. And if you have any more floor seats the pod and you need <laughs> us to, you know. Oh, for sure. We'll, oh. we'll let Taylor know. Yeah. yeah. If you guys are interested. <laughs> Call us. We'll relay the message. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks thank so you much. so thank much. You guys thank you guys so much. much. <laughs> Coop L Works is the proud sponsor of Thunder Basketball Universe. Brewers of the fan favorites, F5 IPA and 99 Calorie Ice Chest IPA. You'll find those and many more Coop beers at retailers across Oklahoma. Learn more at CoopLWorks.com. We're back, and what a fun conversation with Jim and Renee Stanley. Truly just pure Oklahomans at heart. (laughs) amazing couple and Royce you were here for the whole mm-hmm. conversation you got to listen in on all of that what were you thinking while you were sitting over there I mean uh you know I I don't know uh that that anybody could really represent Oklahoma better than them. I've lived here my whole entire life and those people are more oaky than I am that's pretty, <laughs> like they, yeah. and they're not even from here no I know they they like uh you know they are the uh the official um representation of Oklahoma I mean that was it was so fun to listen to and just how earnest and and transparent they are. And like, that was, um, you know, I think that if, if they're the, the parents of the pod, then, uh, they're the parents of Oklahoma at this point. Yeah. yeah. Kind of we're, we're in good hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was also like, I thought it was really just, um, interesting to, to think about, you know, one of those things where you're in, in an arena, you guys probably felt the same way as you look over there and you're like, is that Drake? And, he did have to sit by somebody and it just happened to be those people (laughs) and like so many little things kind of come out of it. And it's just a, it's a fun um, example of like, you don't know what's going to happen at a game that you go to. Right. Yeah. Randomness in the NBA. That's like, that's like the NBA's brand to a T. Yes. Something weird might happen at any game you might go to. It might be on the floor. It might be off the floor. Who knows? And what, for whatever reason, it feels like a lot of that type of randomness often hovers around Oklahoma City. <laughs> I don't it's know why. always something every year. Like big yeah. events always yeah. seem to happen in Oklahoma City. I don't know what it is about that building. Yeah, well, it, it's a great point, and this is why it's like so special to have the NBA mm-hmm. in Oklahoma City with no other professional sporting events here. And like the NBA is also, especially compared to the NFL and Major League Baseball, like it's the sport that has the most chance for interaction. Yeah. You're mm-hmm. so close to the players. You're right on the floor. It's a very celebrity-driven sport as well. So, like, you just never know. I mean, Royce, you've attended pretty much every Thunder game in Oklahoma City. A lot of them. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I I know there's been a lot of crazy, wacky, mm-hmm. different nights. We've had Lil Wayne here in the building. We've had, you know, the the entire NBA shut down because MC of what Hammer happened. Hammer was building. here one yeah, time, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Just, like, can you put it in perspective just – what it's like the the paycom center atmosphere and the, yeah. the things that happen. Well, I mean, yeah, that's it, it, that's what's awesome about it. You know, as somebody that um, lived in Oklahoma before an NBA team and <laughs> now since one's been here, it does kind of it brings the big city element to Oklahoma City. 
and where, you know, you, you show up to a game and it's not just about, you know, having a high level team on the floor to watch yourself with professional athletes and guys that are, you know, incredibly good at what they do, but you know, the players that they're playing against and who's in town that night. And then, yeah, then, then things like that. And I, you know, I think just, you can just kind of see it from afar of the impact that the Thunder have had on Oklahoma City and just the way that people kind of perceive it to be. Even something just as simple as Drake. I know that there were probably a lot of snarky people on Twitter going, what's he doing there? Mm -hmm. But he's there to watch an NBA game, sit mm -hmm. courtside, and watch like some really good young players that are from his country. And right. I, you know, yeah. to me, like that was one of the coolest parts is that like, you know, for whatever reason Drake is here, he also wanted to be there to watch Shea and Lou. And it, oh, by the way, it was really cool that Shea balled out in front yeah. of him, played a great yeah. game. 39 points. Yeah. Um, season high, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that that was uh, – so, like, to me, that's just one of the, the great things about it is that, you know, you can you can show up to the arena and you can watch good basketball. Something weird might happen any any given night. For, for those who are, don't really know, me, Nick, and Royce kind of sit like this uh, on, you know, courtside right. and press, press row. row. And so I remember when Drake walked into the building, I leaned back and I'm like, Gal, Drake's here. And I said, and then, why? <laughs> and, then, and then you said, Drake's here. And I said, yeah, why? I would have said, I would have said Drake stoops. Yeah. <laughs> why is he here? I, I don't remember turning this direction. So what happened when Drake walked in for you? Uh, I didn't. I honestly had no idea until I saw Gal's tweet. I I, oh, like, wow. I didn't notice him. You were so I was locked, locked in. in on the game. Yeah. I was just like, I have to <laughs> watch every yeah. pick and roll. What's going reach. on here? Yeah. Um, I saw Gallus tweet. And I like immediately looked up and like that. That's kind of a popular area for famous people to sit is in those courtside seats. So I immediately looked over there. And mind you, those seats have been empty for the first yeah. half of the game. Right. right. Yeah. So they're you know you don't think and, to and, look over. And also there. Drake kind of stands out. Yeah. <laughs> like, Especially in a big red furry right, coat. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so like I was kind of like oh wow. And I mean immediately like I I got probably thirty texts from people asking like why is he here why is he here and I'm like I don't know I have no idea right no clue at all yeah. <laughs> like you want me you want me to walk over there and ask him like hey, why are you here buddy <laughs> yeah I had no idea but what a fun what, yeah. a fun element to that game the cool part like for Jim and Stanley or Jim and Renee Stanley who were just talking to like if they had never found out who Drake actually was, if their phones hadn't blown up or whatever, <laughs> they still would have had an amazing time. A blast. Yes. They would have had a great time. And and Royce, not to put you on the spot, but like I follow your wife Carrie on mm -hmm. social media and like I see your Carrie's sons good. who uh, come to yeah. the games and they come to a lot of the games. Yeah. And they are like jacked up, regardless of what the I feel bad is. for the people that sit yeah. around them, honestly. <laughs> but but I, I think that like I think again, like that all speaks to just the the game night experience mm. of being able to have an NBA team in your city that like, yes, some nights things are going to be awesome and crazy right. and unexpected and wild. But some nights it's just going to be a normal NBA day game, but it's still a reason to be like jacked up and psyched. Right. Your and, mind, I mean, like and I mean, like, you know, and that's the thing. And by the way, he's convinced that they don't lose when he's here. Oh, okay. They lost for the first time it, when Shay's like a buzzer beater, like rattled oh. in and out. Like that was like the biggest moment of his life. If that goes down, he would have been convinced forever. That they're <laughs> going to go undefeated. I, um, I, yeah, I know it's charm. brutal, yeah. but you know, that's kind of the point though. Like, you know, so you just kind of go back to some of the games and just kind of, you don't know what to expect. Like, you show up to a game, it's the Thunder versus the Kings, maybe not a marquee mm -hmm. matchup. And then you, all of a sudden you see like an incredible Thunder moment with Lou picking De'Aaron Fox's pocket and yep. tr taking to the other end. And like the crowd was like going nuts for that moment. So like you just don't know what's going to happen. And you might have an expectation when you're sitting at home and looking at your tickets going, do I want to go tonight? But like it could end up being a really memorable night if you just decide to come right. and enjoy it. Right. Right. That's that's what happens. Well, at any given night in Paycom Center, especially when it comes to the Thunder. Now, that, that game for the Thunder, it was the beginning of a home road back-to-back. -back. It was a tough, you know, had to go from OKC to Memphis. Lost that night against Houston and then flipped the script. And the Thunder were without several of its players in Memphis. They were without Shea Gildas Alexander. Mm -hmm. Late who, scratch. Late right. scratch, who actually uh, yeah, sustained a concussion yeah. from that Houston game. Fell hard, hit his head in the fourth quarter of that game. They were also without Josh Giddy, who mm -hmm. came down with the flu off the bench. Derek Favors, Mike Muscala also out for that game. So they were playing Kenrich short. Williams. Kenrich Williams, yep. Playing shorthanded in, in that game. And the Thunder fell hard uh, in Memphis. After the game, Coach Mark Dagnalt had some really powerful things to say, and one of the, the hallmarks of this Thunder team throughout this entire season is win, loss, the process is the same. We take the lessons, and we get up, we move forward, and we're back to zero and zero. So let's listen to what Mark Dagnalt had to say after that Memphis game. I mean, we've been you know, in tough 
games before. Um, I would say that in the past and tonight, it's not necessarily who we are. You know, I think we've definitely shown that from a competitive standpoint. You know, this isn't um, this isn't indicative of of who our team is, how we've competed all season. You know, from training camp all the way through the games. Um, you know, so it's important, I think, to keep that in mind internally for us. Um, but this is, you know, the exposure you have to competing, you know, when you compete, you have exposure to the highs and lows of competition and competition comes with great joy uh, and also comes with grief and, and frustration and anger. Um, and when you step in that ring, you know, that's what you expose yourself to is, is all of those things. That's what makes it uh, such a fulfilling experience. Um, and that's why the joy feels so good because, you know, when you get punched and you taste your own blood, you know, it doesn't feel great. It's obviously you got to embrace all the opportunities you get to play. Um, and these are guys that haven't played uh, the minutes that they played tonight. So it's definitely an opportunity for them to do that. Um, but like I said, you know, the lessons to take away from this is, you know, this is part of competing, you know, the exposure that you get to competition, you know, opens you up to all the experiences of competition, good and bad. And, you know, if you don't want to, you know, take the bad, then you, you can't pursue the good. And that's the lesson. You know, you got to just kind of taste your own blood, sit in it. We certainly own it. You know, we're not making excuses or running from it. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important to note that this isn't who we've been all season. Really, really powerful stuff from Mark Dagnall after that game. And he wasn't the only one that had some really good things to say. Mike Muscala also spoke after the game. And, and Ty Jerome, mm -hmm. who had a pretty interesting perspective following that loss. I'm really glad that we got to talk to Ty because I remember when I first met him at the beginning of last season, I got to have kind of an extended conversation with him about his experience at the University of Virginia. You may remember that team was the number one overall seed and they lost to a 16 seed mm -hmm. his sophomore year of college. They had to keep their heads up. They didn't you know, get down about it. And the very next year they came back and won the entire national mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. And so with that kind of perspective, it was, it was really nice to hear from Ty after a really rough you know, loss uh, down in Memphis. And um, he, he just kind of reiterated that story that um, you know, that experience in college was way more embarrassing than an, one NBA game out of 82 in December um, yes, it was the the largest loss in NBA history, but that's something that this team is not going to run away from, not going to mm -hmm. shy from. They're not going to um, duck their heads and try to pretend like it didn't happen. Like just like they, just like Ty and his teammates did at UVA, he said, "We've got to hold our heads up high. We've got to just keep coming back." And the line that I really loved, it said, "It's hard to stop someone that just keeps getting up." Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the that's the Thunder way and the Thunder mentality that has been like. Sam Presti and the, the front office and the ownership have tried to imbue into the team ever since it's been here. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's such a, it's such a powerful concept, Nick, that, you know, in, in some ways that if Ty Jerome, you know, obviously if he could go back in time and fix it, he would rather have not lost to a 16 seed. Right. But in a lot of ways that was a, like a foundational um, formulative moment for that team to come together and mm -hmm. really kind of find themselves. And so, you know, for me, as you kind of look forward and what's coming ahead. And I'm sure that the, a lot of the players kind of wish uh, maybe in the rare situation that they had a back to back to back right now <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because they yeah. probably, they're probably eager to get back out on the court. They have a couple days off here before they play on Monday, but like these are big days ahead where you can, you can take a look at that game. You, you can own it. You can understand that's what uh, Mark Dagnall, like you were talking about Paris, that's what they did. They're, they're not going to run away from it. Mm -hmm. They understand what happened, but now it's about what do you do next and, and how do you respond from it? How do you get better from it? You're going to take some cracks on Twitter. People are going to mm -hmm. make jokes about you, but at the same time, this can be a moment where you start to kind of push yourself forward and use this as motivation, not to say that that won't ever happen again. Right. We're going to prevent that from happening, but what are you going to do about it? Right. How are you going to get up? How are you going to uh, respond from it? You know, what's, what did, uh, what did uh, Bruce Wayne's dad tell him yeah. for crying out? Why do we fall, Bruce? <laughs> to get, to back, get up. back up. Back That's up. right. Yep. Yep. Incredible and advice. <laughs> one other thing that, that Coach Dagnall said that, that goes back to your point is that some of the most painful lessons are the ones that teach you the most. Mm -hmm. And this is a great opportunity for all of these guys. I mean, there were, there were guys that hadn't been in the rotation, you know, throughout the entire season who stepped into 30 plus minutes of action. And so this is a, a great lesson for them, but really for the whole team. And you know that team is going to go back, watch the film, soak it all up right. and move forward. And, and the other thing I say too, and, and Mark said this after the game, like 
don't let this game define what you've seen from the yeah, Thunder. Right. Like they're on a losing streak right now, but this team has been incredibly competitive. And one of the most remarkable things about them is how hard they play every right. given night. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this one is this one's a black eye on the resume right now. But this does not this does not illustrate who this team has been to this point of the year. They've lost game and the games that they've lost have been close. They've been hard fought. They're coin Milwaukee, flip games. Utah. I mean, all of these Boston, Ch Atlanta. Chase shot rattling in and out. I mean, these yeah. have been like close games where they, you know, they had the Rockets the other night and they got away from them late. So I mean, like th this has just not been who they have. It was a perfect storm. The late scratch, I think, to Shea really probably had more of an effect than people realized because they they were uh, really limited at point guard and mm -hmm. they were starting inexperienced guys there. So, um, yeah, I just I, I just think that that's an important thing is that like you can't run from it. It's in the books now. Mm -hmm. It's it's there forever. Um, but this isn't who the Thunder have been all year. Right. Well, the Thunder's got a couple of days off, like you mentioned, Royce, before they hit the road again. The next two games are going to be on the road. So let's give you what's on tap for this team. Gallo, there's something that you've been tracking that you're, you're going to want to keep an eye on as the team moves forward into these next couple of games. That's right. So Lou Dort hit another three uh, on Thursday in Memphis. That extends his streak of consecutive games with at least one three-pointer made to 36. That seems like a lot. And it is a lot. It is. That's because it is. <laughs> <laughs> On Wednesday night, Duncan Robinson of Miami, his streak was snapped at 69 games, making Lou the have, having the second longest active streak of games with uh, with a three pointer made, right behind Steph Curry. Just right behind him. Right behind him. Just so nipping at his heels. <laughs> Steph Curry's did like 158 or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, like right. That. Yeah, you know. So. Got to, every probably not every streak's got to start somewhere, Nick. That's right. Records That's right. are made to be broken. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I will say, it's just incredible to see Lou yeah. Dort at number two on that list with the names behind him now and in front of him. And and by the way, like one of the big things that I've noticed with, with Lou and some of these three-pointers recently is kind of the evolution of the way that he's hitting some mm -hmm. of them. A lot more off the dribble. Yep. Um, yep. A lot more, a little more decisive and quicker. Like those off the dribble threes that Lou's hitting, like that is a big developmental piece that mm -hmm. he has worked really hard on. It's one thing to have somebody set you up and to be open from three and you just not. A lot that. of his threes at the beginning of his right. career were in the corner. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And people were leaving him. They were, you know, yeah. he was building respect as a shooter. And now you can sell, and, and it's opened up other areas, like Lou's getting to the bucket more. And th I mean, to me, this is why he's blossoming as a scorer is because now he's a threat. And he's right. a threat to shoot off the dribble. He's a threat off the catch. And now he's putting the ball on the floor and he's attacking those closeouts. Let's say a hypothetical lineup that has Shea, Lou, and Trey Mann in it in later on this year or next year or the year after. If you have three guys on the floor that you have to go over a pick and roll mm -hmm. on, that's really difficult to defend. You're going to get gashed on drives all night right. long. Yeah, yeah, and with Lou in particular, this growth in offense for him, and you talk about like, especially in like a late game situation, Lou – a staunch defender, mm -hmm. one of, one of the best in the league, and then now you've got a budding guy like Trey Mann who can create. He's already got mm -hmm. the offensive side of it. Now it's kind of a reverse of Lou, right? Like yeah. now he's building that defensive mm -hmm. element as well. So I like that hypothetical. I think that's got some potential down the road. <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go. All right. So like we mentioned, the Thunder will be back in action on Monday in Detroit, and then they're going up north to Drake's hometown, Toronto, Maybe to take. Maybe Drake will be there. Oh, no, who knows? <laughs> you might want to tune in on Bally Sports Oklahoma. Send uh, Jim and Renee up there too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we will catch you then. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to catch us on YouTube as well. We want to thank our special guests, Jim and Renee Stanley, the new parents of the TBU podcast. Thank you so much to our producer, Matt Bishop. And until next time, thunder up and catch you later.